Hi, my name is Chris Morosco, and I'm going to talk about Office 365 and some of the steps you can take to secure it, as well as some of the challenges and why we need to do these uh, steps to secure it. So first, we're going to look at the scenario we have here. We have an Office 365 application in the cloud connected through a firewall to users uh, within the network. And then we have an external collaborator, which is one of the most common reasons why people use these SaaS applications, is for sharing data, not just within the company, but with external people as well. And so this presents some security risks some challenges with uh, threat exposure, um, data risk exposure, and some challenges with this external collaboration. So how do we solve it? So the first question that comes up typically is, doesn't Microsoft already provide enough security built in that I'm protected? And the answer is, is not entirely. They will do some effort to be able to protect your data, um, but it has a different goal than what your goal probably is. So what their goal is, is to protect the infrastructure itself, and it's specifically for breach prevention. Uh, they want to make sure that your tenant instance is separated from someone else, that someone can't break into their infrastructure and get to your data. So the second piece of it is the data itself. Now the data, this is really your intellectual property, your crown jewels that you want to protect, and this is really what's the most critical piece, whether it's, it be within the network or on mobile devices or in SaaS. And so they'll provide a couple key things to, to help solve this for you. First one is they'll encrypt your data. Um, most enterprise level SaaS vendors will encrypt data for you. The second piece is that they typically will do encryptions on the connection of the data. So data at rest is, is encrypted. There's encrypted connections to the clients um, to protect the data in motion as well. And so these are the areas that they focus on. But there are pieces within this that they don't do for you. So for example, if this person inserts a piece of malware, they're not checking for malware. And so that malware, depending on how this encrypted tunnel is set up, can actually traverse through the network, get to different users within that environment. The other piece is that if someone accidentally changes the way that a file is shared, so that this person has rights to things that they shouldn't have had rights to before, suddenly that data is exposed. And really what we're trying to do is prevent breaches, prevent data from being stolen and access that it shouldn't be. So, so that's a couple things that they don't solve within this scenario. So that's where Aperture comes in. And so first step to solve this is, is our SaaS product, and it's called Aperture. Aperture runs in the cloud. It connects directly to this service, and it's able to look for those uh, user behaviors, look for uh, violations of how data is shared, and it's able to look for malware. And the way it does that is it connects to Wildfire. Wildfire is our threat intelligence cloud, which looks for known threats and prevents those known threats from, uh, from being able to propagate. It's able to identify them and stop them. If it's an unknown threat, Aperture can actually send that to Wildfire. Wildfire will detonate it, identify it, and then that will be shared throughout the organization across all the firewall products. So that's the first piece. The second piece, which is, uh, which is also critical, is that Office 365 is typically not the only SaaS product you have in your environment. There's probably other SaaS products as well that also need to be protected. And so in that environment, now you have a situation where you're trying to protect what's in Office 365 and protect what's in all the other uh, SaaS services that you're using that are enterprise level SaaS services, sanctioned SaaS services that are enterprise grade, have SOC 2 compliance, have the proper protections. So, so that's the, the key piece to be able to have one service to be able to look for that user uh, data, how are they sharing it, what are they sharing, and then any violations that are occurring within that. And then the, the second piece that you have to work on is visibility into what's happening at the network level. So we've, we've solved the SaaS level. We know what's happening in SaaS. Now we need to be able to protect the network. And so there's a couple things. And so let's say this is a next-gen firewall. This is a next-gen firewall. The second piece is the visibility and reporting. And with the, the latest release of PanOS, we have a report that gives you full visibility into SaaS usage within, um, within Office 365 and all the other SaaS applications itself. You can see what threats there are. You can see what users are using them, how they're using them, top usage, and, and top applications. It's a great way to have visibility. 
So now that you have visibility into how these applications are being used, then you need to figure out beyond Office 365, uh, how am I protecting different applications? How am I preventing people from going to what would be an unsanctioned application um, versus one that I would allow? So, so let's draw a couple more clouds here. And in this case, we have two different groups of apps. And this group of app is, is going to be unsanctioned. And not only is it unsanctioned, but these are completely blocked applications. These are applications that you don't want people to get to, whether they because of the risk that's involved in using these apps because of the end user license agreement, um, or because they're in an environment that you know is, uh, is prone to malware. But the more interesting one is the more tolerated applications. And so let's label these tolerated. And in this environment, it gets a little more tricky. So, so let's say there's a file sharing app. Let's say that through the report, you see that a bunch of users are using a file sharing service on the network. They've already uploaded a bunch of corporate data, but it's not a sanctioned app. It's not an enterprise level app. And because of that, you don't really know what's happening within that application. Even more worrisome is within this environment, these apps are doing encryption and they may be doing encryption that is something that you can't actually have, have access into. Uh, the firewall can decrypt quite a bit, but there are certain circumstances where nothing can be decrypted by any service because they're pinned to the client itself. So in that case, what do you do? So, so you do one of two things. Uh, the first one is you want to prevent people from putting more, uh, app, more data within this application. So you want to make it so that the policy for this app is only download stop the uploads from happening. And then the second thing you want to do is that anything that's encrypted that you can't have visibility into, you block. So now you've controlled what was a potential security risk with a tolerated application to make it so that people can no longer upload files, malware can no longer get through. Now you set as a corporate policy, everyone's going to OneDrive now. You tell them you have to pull your data off, move it to OneDrive. Then after that's happened, be able to move that application to a completely blocked, unsanctioned application. So it gives you full control over that uh, capability of who uses which app, how do they use it, and then how do you migrate them from what was an unsanctioned and a tolerated application to a fully sanctioned application with Office 365. So that's a quick look at Office 365, how we protect it, and some steps to take to, uh, to control the usage of applications and migrate users to Office 365. To find out more, go to paloaltonetworks.com.